folks. Uh, Ed Overstreet. I run a Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. And uh, by the way, I haven't forgotten <clears throat> to go back and finish the narrowband processing of M16, the Eagle Nebula. <clears throat> um, gotten very busy and uh, uh, with work, and so uh, it's been hard to find some time to uh, to dedicate to that. But uh, that is in the works, and we will um, we will pick up where we left off and finish it. But today I am imaging the sun. This will be a, a live imaging session, and it will run for a bit. And so let's go over and take a look at what's going on with our star. Uh, let me find the screen I'm going to share. <clears throat> Here we go. And um, we have. Um, this is my ASCOM virtual controller, which helps me to uh, dial up uh, the direction I want to go with uh, the sun. And uh, the uh, uh, position that I want to go, I'm not sure of. Uh, I'm going to take you to another screen. And uh, there are two websites. <coughs> that I go to before I start imaging the sun because I want to make sure there's something uh, remarkable going on before I start uh, setting up and, and running an imaging session and this is one of them uh, the website is sdo.gsfc.nasa.gov um, and the other is uh, this uh, gong2 nsoedu website um, I noticed though that <clears throat> there aren't um, uh, these things haven't been updated in in a while. Uh, the only uh, this a website at Big Bear was recently updated two minutes ago, and this is fairly close, 50 minutes ago, and it looks sharper. Let's take a look at this one, and this is a reason why I d <clears throat> decided to uncover the scope and uh, and do some imaging. One, I'm uh, I'm curious to see what's going on here and uh, there is a, a solar flare so my field of view can 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 catch both and I'm hoping to uh, uh, I, I want to see what is going on um, it's one thing for this telescope to gather this data <clears throat> it's another for my my uh, low budget uh, kit to gather this data there's also a fairly uh, a fairly prominent prominence that's um, uh, happening in a, a part of the sun that's very unremarkable. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I do like to uh, image prominences over a period of time, doing a time lapse and just watch them do their thing. But um, uh, I think I'm going to spend my time trying to find this place right here. So, let's go back to. Uh, our image of the sun and one of the first things I need to do is to bring up my um, focuser because we aren't in focus a little fuzzy and um, let me see I think well I don't know what COM port this is going to be let's try four well it's not four let's try three maybe it was five no it's three okay um, I made a mistake and I used this laptop. I have a laptop that I use for each telescope. I have three telescopes set up outside permanently and I picked up the wrong Lenovo laptop last night and did some planetary imaging on another kit and I just left the laptop out there rather than bring it in and so all my ports are haywire but I got everything connected so <clears throat> uh, it wouldn't have taken me any time at all if I would have used the uh, laptop that I have uh, designated just for my solar kit okay <clears throat> excuse me uh, I'm, uh, dealing with one of those summer allergy fits let's uh, let's try moving the focuser in and uh, see if we can't bring out some more detail. I don't see any more. In fact, it looks like it's getting worse. Let's go the other way. Let's bring it out. 
and I'm racking I'm actually racking the focuser in yeah there we go and um, that's better uh, I may have gone too far let's go back 10 let's go out another 10 and see if it oh yes this is much better we were really off we were off 100 steps uh, okay let's take uh, we're at 8 times sidereal that's pretty quick let's go to 4 times sidereal and uh, let's start uh, moving around let's see east ought to bring the sun we may have to go 8 times sidereal this thing is moving It ought to move the sun up. I don't think we're moving at all. We aren't. Let's go to, uh, this may be a real short session. Okay, let's just disconnect this. Uh, let's disconnect everything. And uh, I'm going to close sharp cap. Yep. And let's reopen it. Hey, hello, Xavier. How you doing? We may not be here very long. Uh, I just saw something that tells me we got a problem. Let me go back to my... It says that my mount is not pulling any amps and that it's idle so uh, I'm going to unplug this and connect all the gear again and let's see what's going on hmm well sharp cap in Let's try uh, connecting the 174, and we got it, we got it, uh, let's see if it moves it, okay, there we go, alright, we're going, sun's going up, so let's uh, head down here, and let's go over to, alright, Let's just scroll around the sun. Here's that. Um, let's see if we can pinpoint this uh, on our. Uh, that's got to be this thing right here. So uh, we want to go. Okay, let's go on up and get back. So we're going to go up. probably on the other side here it is now let's bring it there and look let's frame it a little better go up here and get a reticule and then I'm going to go south and try to oh, wrong way I'm going to go north and try to bring that sunspot into the middle of the reticle I'm dyslexic this morning and now we want to move the sun down which will be west right. okay now let's um, overexpose this a good bit 
and uh, see if we can see the prominence they're talking about. And there it is, right here. Uh, okay, so we want to get that. And we want to get this. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a time lapse. I want to go first we have to uh, go to file sharp cap settings file names we got to find a place to store this let's go to our external solid state drive let's create a new folder and call this 8 23 21 not z solar We want to apply that. Okay, we also want to go to. Um, I want to make sure that I have. Uh, sun checked. Okay, we're going to do. Uh, that's our target name, so we want to do the sun here. And. We need to now restore our reticle that I lost. Yeah. Here it is. No reticle. Reticle. And uh, we're now going to need to move, I think, north. And then we're going to have to move west. And we're going to have to move south to get it back in the center. I've got drift because I'm not polar lined, but because it's not a high budget mount, I'm going to have drift in both RA and uh, deck. So what I want to do is I want to start capture, and uh, I want to take uh, 300 frames, uh, 300 AVI files, excuse me. Um, I want uh, do, 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 do. I want there to be uh, a thousand frames. I mean a thousand. Um, sorry, got this backwards. A thousand frames, and I want this to be 300 uh, files, and the interval uh, between. I want it to be uh, 10 seconds. No, let's make it 20 seconds. That give me time to uh, between pictures to recenter. Okay, let's start. And we're down here capturing a thousand frames at 92 frames per second. I run my histogram almost to the point of clipping when I'm doing a time lapse and I want to get the prominence also. The prominence is over here and, and you cannot see it and you won't be able to see it until I process this uh, data. But uh, I'll be using a software program that uh, called IMPPG and I'll invert this and so uh, it'll make the sun appear better, uh, easier to identify remarkable places on the sun, and it'll also bring out the proms. It'll turn this darker and this brighter. And, uh, and you tweak it with curves in IMPPG. That's free software. And, uh, and from there, we'll run an alignment. And from there, we'll go into Pix Insight, add color, convert to R RGB, and then add color, and do a curves. Uh, then we'll batch all of them using the process container and process explorer. And then we'll bring it back into, uh, oh, we'll start with uh, auto stacker. We've got to stack these first. 
PIPP will be used to uh, create the time lapse. So we're capturing, and then as soon as this is finished, I'm going to uh, move this over to the north a little bit. Just kind of center it. It went too far. Oh, that's close enough for government work. And now we're capturing another thousand frames. So I'm going to be babysitting this mount uh, for the next uh, two hours. And uh, I'll be manipulating the hand controller, the virtual hand controller, so that I can kind of help AutoStacker stack these files, try to keep it in the center of this reticle. I uh, don't have to. I can walk away for a few minutes, but uh, when I come back, there will be some drift. AutoStacker does a good job of uh, realigning for you, making up for your walkaways. And I will process this uh, sun image uh, and come back and do that. Uh, I won't do that online because the steps in PixInsight, uh, you'd be sitting and waiting while the uh, steps play out and uh, so I will record the processing of the sun but I will uh, upload that to uh, my YouTube channel. If you're on Facebook watching this then you want to go to Night Sky Imager and if you do uh, consider uh, liking and uh, also uh, consider uh, subscribing to the channel And I would appreciate it. Just tells me that you enjoy looking at this stuff. I plan to go live again tonight. <clears throat> I'll be imaging uh, Jupiter and uh, Saturn. They look to be um, uh, in the right place. And the sky looks to be in the... Uh, perfect place. I don't know if the great red spot will be uh, visible. I will uh, double check. But uh, I can go to Windsor Post and find out. But if it is, that's a gracious plenty. I would have had to have stayed up to 4 o'clock last night in order to, or this morning, in order to have gotten the great red spot. And had I done that, I would have two great red spots for eyes. Anyway, Guys, uh, this is it. This is the sun. There's not a whole lot left other than for me to sit here and uh, click off uh, another uh, uh, time-lapse video. Uh, we'll be shutting this down at 1 o'clock and uh, heading over to uh, Fair Forest Middle School Observatory and meeting with Scott Taylor, who runs the planetarium and observatory, and we will be ordering some high-end telescope mounts and telescopes for uh, the new uh, outside observatory. Um, it's an exciting time at Fair Forest Middle School. Okay, with that being said, uh, I'm going to say uh, have a good rest of the day and find something nice to say about somebody and tell them.